This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. Uh, this is the first of two lectures on um, corporate reorganisation and capital reconstruction schemes. Uh, and this is reasonably popular in the exam. But the reason I'm having two lectures, uh, the first one is just uh, talking, no calculations. Uh, talking about what we mean and why there might be a reorganisation or reconstruction. Uh, but then I will go through um, an arithmetic example, a calculation question, a past exam question, uh, to show you uh, the approach. But I'll say more about that when we come to it. Uh, but first of all, the discussion side of it. Uh, part of this is uh, simply terminology, but you'll see the first bit. I'm not going to write the whole thing down. I've mentioned demergers, sell-off, some bundling, asset stripping. Um, all of these are really splitting the company up. Uh, we may, I may have a, I, <laughs> we may have a, a large business with various different areas involved, different types of product, different types of business. Um, we may decide to split it into separate businesses, make them more efficient. Um, uh, and a pure demerger would be splitting the business into two or more parts, and our shareholders will end up with shares in each of the separate businesses. Um, a sell-off, we get rid of part of the business. Perhaps one part of our business doesn't fit in with our overall strategy. So we decide to sell that to somebody else. Our unbundling dispose of parts of the business separately and that effectively becomes asset stripping. People buy parts of the business or the whole business in order to sell uh, and get the value of the assets. And somewhat more importantly, management buyouts, management buy-ins. Um, I said a minute ago that uh, our business may be, uh, we may trade in several different areas. Uh, one part of the business may not fit in our strategy, and so we decide to sell it off. Uh, but quite commonly, is to attempt to sell it off to the existing managers. So the existing managers of this part of the business, they'll buy that part and then it becomes their company, it will run it themselves. Uh, they almost certainly need to raise extra finance, um, probably from a venture capitalist, or possibly from loans, but they'll buy part of the business from us. Uh, and that tends to be advantageous potentially to both parties. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I'm selling part of the business to the existing managers so uh, it avoids uh, redundancy fees and the like. Uh, as far as the managers buying it are concerned, well, they like to be much more motivated since it's their business. It's quite common for the managers of part of the business to be dissatisfied with head office telling them to do things they don't like. So the managers buy the business and they feel they've more expertise, uh, they'll feel they can benefit and grow the business accordingly. Now that's a management buyout. A management buy-in is where instead of the existing managers buying the business and then running it, an external team, they'll buy it, but with the intention that they will run it. So all of that was very much terminology, and again, I've not read every word, read it yourself. Uh, capital reconstruction schemes are somewhat different in that it tends to apply when a company is having problems. You know, maybe a company has a, a large amount, for example, of debt finance, they've issued bonds and so on. Uh, the company is struggling, and there are really two alternatives. Either to close the company down, 
and the debt lenders in particular may be in a position to force that on us. You know, perhaps we can't repay, uh, pay the interest and so on. However, the business closes down, everybody loses, of course, if we've been doing badly, the debt lenders stand not to get all the money back. And so an alternative is to come to an agreement with the providers of finance to reshape the company. Uh, perhaps the uh, lenders, okay, we've been doing badly, they're not going to get the money back in full. So perhaps they'll be prepared to accept shares to replace the loan. Or perhaps they'll be prepared to renegotiate the loan. At the same time, perhaps we'll raise some more finance to get the company back on its feet. But it's in that sort of way, restructuring where the finance has come from. Maybe cancel some of the shares. Uh, again, the cancel the shares, some shareholders are losing out. But it might be better to lose out a bit and hopefully the company then being in a position to continue rather than close down completely uh, and perhaps lose everything. Well, it's um, reconstructions that tend to be more common in the exam. And the reason I'm going through a past exam question, and you'll see there I've written it's fluff taught. So get hold of the question either, well you should, you really should have a, re a revision or exam kit uh, for practice and it should be in there. Otherwise you can download it from the ACCA website. But I'm going through a past exam question because unlike most of the other areas in the exam, there's not really a standard technique or anything really to learn. You know, when you're dealing with foreign exchange risk, when you're dealing with net present value calculations, okay, there's a lot to learn. You've got the rules, so to speak. With these, it's really a combination of following the instructions in the question and uh, basic financial accounts knowledge. And so I can't teach a set of rules in the way we can for uh, other topics. Uh, the best is to work through a question, and there'll be some other questions loaded in the Revision Kit Live section. But I'm going to work through in the next lecture this question fluff taught to show you the approach, and at the same time, hopefully, to revise uh, bits of basic financial accounts.